Okay, Theater of the Absurd is a genre that was found, founded um, mostly in the 1950s. Uh, though the phrase itself wasn't coined until 1961 by the critic Martin Eslin. Many view Jean Genet's 1947 play The Maids as the first absurdist play, but some go all the way back to 1896 um, and cite Ubu Roy by Alfred Jerry as the first. Ubu Roy couldn't really actually call it the first absurdist play, but it is the first play that gave a lot of ideas for expressionism uh, and other, and then in later absurdism and a bunch of weird ideas and concepts for theater. So Theater of the Absurd was established as a response to World War II and was linked to the philosophy of existentialism. And Eslin, the critic mentioned before, um, observed that while realistic plays tend to explain events through environment and or character motivation, Theater of the Absurd instead embraces the irrational, arbitrary, and inexplicable events. Um, often in an absurdist play, events usually seem to be part of some kind of order or scheme, but it is an order that the characters and their audience cannot quite grasp. Absurdist plays often lack dramatic irony, where the audience knows more than the characters. Uh, instead, these plays refuse to provide the privilege, often leaving the audience very confused. Ultimately, the audience must create significance without the comfort of a transcendent, predetermined worldview. So, talk a little bit more about existentialism. We'll talk about uh, the two French philosophers, Jean-Paul Sartre and um, Albert Camus. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Rick Jones quotes from theater history is that both of them are great philosophers and okay playwrights. Um, Albert Camus famously wrote The Myth of Sisyphus. Uh, that compared all the lives, um, all lives to that of the tragic figure Sisyphus, who had to uh, drudge, who was cursed to uh, drudge a boulder up a mountain endlessly with no rest or purpose. And once he got to the top, the boulder would immediately tumble to the bottom and he'd have to start all over again. So Camus believed that there was only really one real philosophical question to ask, which is um, to commit suicide or not. So if uh, all lives were this Sisyphus story, why not just end it all? So basically, he saw that the world was aimless and completely absurd. So with this information, people only have three choices. You can ignore it and go about your life. Two, you can commit suicide. Or three, you can accept this worldview and embrace it. Jean-Paul Sartre, very similar, uh, created the idea of the existential hero in his writing. You might remember in theater history too, talking about the flies. He also wrote, no exit. Uh, he believed that one must uh, take responsibility for their own actions. Uh, very specifically, he said that people are condemned to be free um, when fully responsible for their actions. So, going back to theater history too again, there are five common occurrences in absurdist plays. Not... Uh, every absurdist play is going to have all of these, but all absurdist plays will have some of them. The first one is circularity in action. The characters will find that they where that they end up exactly where they started. S number two is stereotypical characters. Number three is a the notion of language is downgraded. Number four. It's not always tragic, not always comic. 
And number five, uh, it leaves you with a message that is fundamentally intellectual. So, as you can see, just right off the bat, uh, Biederman follows at least th three of these. So, just to give a little more context on absurdist theater, there were the four most important absurdist playwrights. Uh, they all wrote in France in the 1950s, but only one of them was actually French. And that guy was Jean Genet, as previously mentioned, writing The Maids. Some don't even view The Maids as not really an absurdist play, but just like kind of the beginning, starting off with that is... Um, and second, we have Samuel Beckett, who was Irish. He wrote Waiting for Godot, uh, Endgame, Happy Days, etc. Lots of those guys. Uh, then we have Arthur Adamov, um, who is Russian. His most notable work is uh, Professor Turan. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And then finally we have Eugene Ionesco, uh, who wrote The Chairs, The Bald Soprano, Rhinoceros, all that, all that good stuff. So that is absurdism.